cyber. We saw we saw in that fight with a guy. Ooh, you see how he, you see how he twisted Dominic's nose? Can we go back to that real quick? Look at this, look at this. <laughs> Dominic Snooze. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Keys to the Underdogs. I am your host, Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. Triple C. And guess what, guys? Today, I am breaking down the biggest underdog of UFC 299. Yep, that's right. I'm talking about Marlon Cheeto Vera. Guys, this episode wouldn't be possible without our sponsor. That's right. I'm talking about DraftKings. Remember, guys, the crown is yours. Are you ready to place your bets? I've teamed up with DraftKings, and for a limited time, new customers can seize an incredible offer before the fights begin. All first-time bettors who wager just $5 will instantly receive $150 in bonus bets. Don't miss out. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now, and remember to apply promo code Triple C. Here's what's in store for you. New customers bet $5 on any wager and watch 150 in bonus bets hit your account instantly. Already a DraftKings member? No worries, all customers can enjoy risk-free same game parlay or SGPX if your bet doesn't hit. Get a bonus bet back. So don't wait any longer. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers enter promo code Triple C. Bet just five dollars on any wager and receive a hundred and fifty in bonus bets instantly. Remember, it's promo code Triple C exclusively at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Enough talk. Let's take it to the big screen. Here we go. Marlon Vera, age 31, 5'8", weight 136 pounds, wins 23, eight losses. His last, his last one was against Pedro Munoz, which he won by decision. And obviously we can't forget this one, man, because he definitely got 50-45 and somehow some judge gave Cheeto Vera that fight. Uh, obviously a win over Dominic Cruz, Raw Font, and then obviously Frankie Edgar. These are his last five fights that Cheeto Vera has had. And stylistically, I tend to look at him and see who is it that kind of problematically gave him more, more of the problems. The guy that pretty much gave him the most problem, in my opinion, until he got knocked out, was this guy right here, Dominic Cruz. Dominic Cruz's lateral movements gave him a lot of problems, including a guy like Frankie Yeager. Could a guy like Sean O'Malley continue to keep using a lot of those lateral movements to avoid, uh, to, you know, to avoid a lot of, the, you know, the 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 stalking and the pressure that Cheeto, Cheeto Vera is going to bring to the table. So keys to the underdog. The first thing, if I am in a position where, if I'm Cheeto Vera, the first thing that I'm looking at, guys, is right here, attacking the lead leg. I mean, we saw, I think I think every time he threw a kick, he landed on, 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 uh, on, Sean, on Sean O'Malley. Uh, you know, even even a guy like Peter Young, Peter Young hit Sean O'Malley quite a bit to the legs, but decided to wrestle and use his hands. I mean, he was onto something, but he kind of, you know, uh, let the pedal go a little bit. Yeah, that's one. Notice, and it wasn't even a hard kick, but it was that per he hit him right in the peroneal nerve. If you watch, look now, cheated. Look, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's not a hard kick, but you can tell he's hurt. He doesn't know how to disguise his composure. Bah, right there, just right there up top. Did you guys notice that Demetrius Johnson coming with the same damn kick made me go limp. But it takes a minute. It's like your foot is falls asleep, but yet you can still feel it. You know what I'm saying? And I think that was the biggest difference in that fight. Yep. And I'm surprised this dude's like going back. Boom. Yep. That's another kick. That's a solid kick. No, that's a kick to the other leg now. Yep. And right now, look, you got him. You got him backed up against the yep. Another one. You got him backed up against the cage. You got him backed up. Sean doesn't like that. Sean doesn't want to be against the cage. That's more likely where people want to take him. Boom. So you know if he's not in the center moving around doing his movements and he's around this other area, boom, another one. Another one. And then, and then Peter Young goes. Peter Young just, yep, another one to both sides. That's the beauty about Peter too. He goes righty and lefty, but bah, right on top of that knee. If you notice where he's kicking, 
That's where the pernal, that's where the peroneal nerve is at, where the knee is at, but around the side there. But that's the biggest thing for me is attack the lead leg of Sean O'Malley. He, he he has gone better with the, the, he has gone better when it comes to fakes and feints and also him ca capturing his distance, but his lead leg is still there. You can still kick it. You almost you just you need to really defense up and continue to keep hitting and kicking those damn leg kicks. And the number two key for a guy like Marlon Chito Vera is don't react to his feints. Don't react to his fakes and feints. This is this is one thing that I did tell Al Jermaine Stern. I was like, hey, Al Jermaine. You know, he was asking me, hey, hey, so who do we think about this fight? You know, a lot of these guys watch my breakdowns. And I'm like, don't react to his fakes. He's going to move, he's going to juke. He's going to do X, Y, and Z, he's gonna counter you. You know, so don't, what did he do? He did exactly what I didn't tell him to do. Anyhow, don't react to his fakes. And this is one thing that I will say that Cheeto, that Cheeto, because he doesn't have that, uh, he doesn't have like that agility or whatnot. I think he's too slow to react, so he just stays, which is actually goes in his favor. Yeah, but he's staying. If you notice, he's, you know, he's reacting a little bit, but he's not going back like everybody else, because that's what he wants. He wants you to go back to eventually give him that right distance. Yup. Marlon's doing a good job of just staying there. Like he's not, he's not, he's not reacting to this dude's fakes. He's not reacting to his fakes. I mean, if it comes, it comes. You know, that's why you gotta go first. That's why you gotta go. You gotta get him go backwards. Peter Yan as well. You know, Peter Yan stayed, stayed. Yeah, stayed. Because the moment you go back, you start giving this dude leverage to eventually kick you or find the hands. Yeah. Which throws this dude off. I mean, does he have great striking? Yeah, 100%, but this isn't the striking one. Now watch. Now, now notice the difference on Aljamain. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Look at how, look at how further back he's going. Like, like that little thing right there. Look, 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 he's going back again. He's going back again. You see what I'm saying? Like he's reacting, he's getting to do certain things. He's leaning. Yeah, and then that's it. That's what he caught. That's what he caught him. Boom, use his fakes. Boom, baited him, baited him to come in. Baited him to come in. <laughs> Overextended, boom, ca caught him with that right hand. You know, do not react to his fates. And the other thing too is forward pressure. You gotta be, you gotta be able to take the hit. You gotta be able to take the hit and say, fuck it. This is what it is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow him. He's not, he's not a, he's not a five round fighter. Um, we saw in the past, again, I go back to looking at the clock against that other dude with the colored, colorful hair, like uh, things like that. If you got to do that, I was like, dude, like I'm, my gas tank is going on E, but forward pressure is going to be key against this dude. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep it there. Just keep it there. Especially the same height and everything. Like with Dominic, you just go. Press him the whole time, make him work. Bah, it catches him. Because the thing is with Cheeto, Cheeto doesn't have that agility. He doesn't have that lateral side move. We saw, we saw in that fight with a guy. Ooh, you see, how he, you see how he twisted Dominic's nose? Can we go back to that real quick? Look at this, look at this. Bah. <laughs> Dominic snooze. And then the same thing with here. His forward pressure was key. He doesn't react, let him throw, and then watch. Up kick down the middle. I thought Frankie was still good in this position here though. It's like, I don't know who the, I don't know who the ref was, but man, you should let him fucking fight, dude, Jesus. I thought Frankie was winning that fight. But either way, you gotta go, you gotta go straight lateral to, if you fight a guy like Cheeto, cause he could be dangerous. You know, he's got kicks. He's got, especially when he threw that kick up the middle. That's dangerous, man. And the biggest thing to me is take the fight to the deepest waters. Drown him. Like, you almost got to go straight up Marab. Like, take, test his freaking gas tank. Like, make him work. Can, can maybe Cheeto go in for some takedowns? Can you make him fight another fight rather than just making him feel comfortable here? Because if you make him feel comfortable here, Cheeto, for five rounds and let him be on his feet and let him juke, Man, he could just outpoint you. He really could. You're gonna have to make it dirty. The only way you make it dirty is you make him fight. Let him throw. 
develop good defense. Good callus here. Yeah, and this is the fifth round. I want to say this is maybe the only round Cheeto won, maybe. But he, but you got to bring the fight. If you're able to bring the fight, yeah, yeah, you, you can't. Like you got to win the fight. You got to be able to just go in there and just pretty much let him throw. Do not react to his fakes. Let him, let him do what he wants to do. It's all good. Yeah, just bring, just bring the fight. There's not, there's not, there's nothing else you could do. I mean, he showed it before, but notice that was fifth. This was the fifth round too. You know, I don't know if sometimes Cheeto doesn't believe in the, from round one to four, or whatever that may be, bring the fucking fight. You know, Rob found it in understanding your wrestling, but that's where you would want to maybe more likely probably take him. But whatever that is, either way, Cheeto Vera got the nod, but it's that forward pressure. And it's that relentlessness that he brings with, with, with having faith in his hands where he's able to get the damn victory. So summarizing the keys to Cheeto Vera to win this fight. Number one, he's gonna have to attack that lead leg. Sean O'Malley has been proven to continue to keep sticking that leg out there, go out there, fake, faint, do whatever you can to cover distance to eventually kick. Don't react to his fakes, faints. Oh my God, does, 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 does Sean O'Malley love the distance game? Does he love to, you know, fake and have you go back and he starts to pinpoint what is it that he actually wants? You got to bring that forward pressure to him. I mean, come on, Cheeto, you've done it against a guy like San Hagen in the fifth round. You've done it against a guy like Rob Font in the fifth round as well. I mean, you left him nice and bloody, but you had to bring that forward pressure. And the last thing is just turn it into a fight. You know, as, as you kick the lead leg, you don't react to the face, you forward pressure, you just take him to those deep waters. And that's the biggest thing. And that's why I believe that the Kesey underdog, and how is it that Cheeto Marlon Vera could defeat Sean O'Malley? Will we hear and new?